All right, great twelve. So we're going to start electrochemistry. It's the second last section for this year, with um, it's part of chemical change, and this is quite an important section because it's going to go back to what you remember about redox from grade eleven. So first, let's revisit some electrochemistry concepts. So basically, we're looking at redox. Remember that an electrolyte is simply a solution or a liquid or a dissolved substance that conducts an electrolyte conducts electricity through the movement of ions. This is very important. It has to be a liquid, particularly for our purposes. Just a quick reminder of oxidation reduction. There is a video in Teams called Revision of Redox Reactions. Please, if you're not sure of this, go look at it. It's quite, it's quite a nice little explanation for you and it helps you re-look at this and it's a visual thing for you. In a redox reaction, remember that oxidation is the loss of electrons. All right, reduction is the gain of electrons. We know that. And an oxidizing agent is a compound that gains electrons, so it is reduced. Okay, an oxidizing agent causes reduction to happen. Sorry, oxidize, oxidizing agent causes oxidation to happen. It's an agent of oxidation. The reducing agent loses electrons, so it is oxidized itself. It causes something else to be reduced all right because it gives something else its electrons great so now we've got the basis we're going to start looking at electrolysis we're going to start with the first part of this there's two types of cells electrolytic and galvanic we're going to start with the electrolytic electrolysis is a chemical process in which electrical energy is converted to chemical energy so we're going to use an electric current to create a chemical reaction so an electrolytic cell is an electrochemical cell that converts electrical energy into chemical energy. I've already said this twice in some ways. Guys, this is very important. They love the energy changes, all right? Through electrode reactions that are sustained by a supply of electrical energy, they are non-spontaneous, okay? And my writing is getting worse as we do this. So they are non-spontaneous. These are reactions that if you did not put the chemical, if you did not put in the the electric current the reaction will not happen okay so it's very important there is another video that you can now go look at which is the electrolytic cell which really does give you a nice visual representation of what's happening in an electrolytic cell with animations and things moving so please do yourselves a favor and go watch it an electrolytic cell is a very simple setup. It's one container, okay, where we have two electrodes. Reduction always takes place at the cathode. So this is always where reduction takes place. The anode is where oxidation takes place. Always, always, always. The electrodes generally made out of carbon. Now, obviously, there's other issues. There's other times when we're not going to use carbon, but we use carbon because it's non-reactive in this context. So it doesn't take part in the reaction, which is what we want. The electrodes are placed in a common electrolyte, and the electrolyte is either an aqueous salt or it is molten. So it's a liquid, okay? What you need to remember here is that the anions, the negative um, ions, go towards the anode. That's why it's called the anode. The cations go to the cat. Ode. It's why it's called the cathode. It's also why. So we want the negative to be attracted to a positive. So the anode is the positive part of an electrolytic cell. The cathode is the negative part of the electrolytic cell. So if we look at electrolysis in an aqueous solution, in other words, something that is dissolved in water, what we have to remember is that water is polar. So the positive parts, positive side of the water will be attracted to the cathode. The negative side is attracted to the anode, okay? Now, water is very special. We know this. We've done this often. And it can either be reduced or oxidized. It depends on what the other substance is. Or if we want to just actually get the water to have a current passing through it so we can create oxygen and, and hydrogen. So I've said all of that. Now, whether it's oxidized or reduced is depends on the comparative strength of the other thing that's in the solution. 
all right? So like with acids and bases, it all depends on the other things as to what water is going to be or how water is going to behave, all right? So we're going to look at the electrolysis of sodium iodide. Now, please, this, could be, this will work the same whether this is sodium iodide, sodium chloride, sodium bromide, all right, or sodium fluoride. I've run out of space. The, what I'm actually concerned about is the sodium atom here, okay? So when we have sodium iodide, what we expect to happen is that the iodine will get oxidized. It will give away its electrons to become iodine, and the sodium will take electrons to become sodium metal. However, if it is an aqueous solution, this does not happen. What we find is that hydrogen gas is produced at the cathode and not the sodium metal. So this becomes a problem for us, all right? So what we're saying here is that the water itself is reduced in preference to the sodium ions. Why? Because water is a stronger oxidizing agent. It wants to be reduced more than sodium does. Why? Because of its structure, okay? So we don't need to worry about why, it just is. So... So water gets reduced and becomes hydrogen gas. Now, before you go, oh, am I going to remember all these equations? You don't have to remember all these equations. We're going to use a redox table when we get to the end of this, and that redox table will show you all these equations, okay? But the point is that the water is being reduced. The iodine is being oxidized, okay? We have two electrons both. So this is the net ionic reaction. So what you need to recognize here is that the Na plus ion is a spectator in this case. Guys, this doesn't happen with every metal. It's specifically with sodium that you need to know this. Okay, so please don't stress about it with any of the other metals. It's really just for sodium that this happens. If, if this had been chlorine, bromine, iodine, or fluorine, etc., you would get the, they would be oxidized, the water gets reduced. Okay, so it's all about the strength of the other substance. But we can electrolyze water. If I can say it like that. So if we put water into a container and we pass an electric current through it, what we will see is we will see hydrogen, oxygen gas being produced at the anode and we will see hydrogen gas being produced at the cathode. Water is both oxidized and reduced. When it is oxidized, it forms oxygen. When it's reduced, it forms hydrogen. And together, okay, first of all, I need to times this reaction by two because there's four electrons there's two electrons we can't have a, a difference in the number of electrons so i multiply the reduction reaction by two that then gives me four electrons those electrons will cancel out so a net ionic reaction looks like this however the h plus and the o minus will combine with each other form h four h to o we never, ever, 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 ever have the same thing on both sides of the reactions. So essentially, it's like a little bit of a mess before we get there, is that we're going to go minus the 4H2 on that side, minus 4H2O on that side, and I'm left with two waters, which become hydrogen and oxygen. It's actually fairly straightforward. Please, you now need to do activity three on page 249. The answers are in teams.